It looks like we're live. I want to thank everybody for joining us. I want to let everyone know that this is a interactive discussion. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. And um, this is going to be a little bit lengthier um, episode than what we've done in the past, but definitely stay until the end. We do have a special announcement. So with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and give JT, the CEO of Core Systems, the mic. Give us, you know, your background and your role at Core Systems and Core Systems in general. Thanks, Kat. And uh, good morning for the US and uh, good evening for those in Europe and everywhere else. Uh, everyone here on the call, um, thanks a lot for having me here, Kat. I really appreciate uh, these series and uh, really the content that we get out of them as well. Um, I'm JT. Uh, that's short for Jean-Thomas, but everybody calls me JT, so I think we'll stick with that for today. Uh, CEO of Core Systems. Uh, Core Systems has been around for a very long time. The company was uh, launched in 2006. Uh, we're very well known for having developed uh, an FSM software, field service management software that we carved out uh, and sold to SAP back in 2018. So we kind of have our DNA coming from really the field service uh, space. And uh, over the last two years, we've really been refocusing uh, the company on uh, uh, the next phase uh, for service management in general and, and field service management uh, by bringing AI into the loop and uh, focusing on helping technicians, helping dispatchers, helping service staff make uh, better decisions faster. Absolutely. JT, how would you define Gen AI? Because I feel like AI is all over the place. Everybody has different definitions or what that means. So for you, what, how would you define uh, Gen AI. Totally, yeah, and uh, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, people focusing on the technicalities of the different sub segments of AI, etc. I'll I think I'll spare you the technical definition of uh, uh, you know general uh, <laughs> general <laughs> generative uh, transformer models, etc. I think you know from a business perspective, for me, Gen AI is really what allows us uh, to solve business problems faster, supporting humans in their path of, uh, of uh, solving business problems. And especially also with a take on, you know, taking away those menial administrative kind of repetitive tasks that, you know, we all don't really like to do and uh, take that away from them and, re and, and really automate that. Uh, I think yeah. that's, uh, that's where Gen AI can help a lot. And, and Gen AI has this, uh, you know, ability to, to take what's been done in the past and take what's uh, been learned or what's you know the data that uh, a company has generated over time and the history and pull all that together and also find you know these these nuggets that are hidden in there that are sometimes really hard for a human to find and by by taking that you know Gen AI can help us you know get more productive faster help mm -hmm. new employees get up to speed faster and uh, you know, just just bring out that knowledge that uh, that's kind of hidden in these in these heaps of data that we frankly all amass, yeah. you know, with uh, our mobile devices, with our emails, with our, you know, and all the documents that we generate over over a career, frankly. Yes, I like how you started that out where you were talking about um, it helping people, and that's something that reminds me of like. Adam Gloss during Field Service Palm Springs talked about generative AI and AI empowering people. And I think that's such a key point is that AI not taking over, you know, people or corporations and more so empowering them. So what is the maturity of companies and their AI adoption journey? What are you seeing or what are you experiencing with that? Yeah, that's a good question. And uh... I think there's a very, very broad field. Uh, I mm -hmm. think, as you say, you know, there's some companies uh, that uh, that are, you know, really already using AI to empower people. And there's uh, there's uh, companies, a lot of companies that are still very much at the beginning of this journey, and um, that who are who are kind of in this exploration phase, who kind of know they need to do something but don't know what, don't know what the business case is, or or you know have concerns, uh, concerns from from all you know, our possible sides, coming from our possible sides, from, uh, you know, data privacy to, uh, you know, can I, what, what data can I safely use uh, with Gen AI? 
to uh, to uh, you know employee right concerns uh, etc and obviously also the concern of uh, you know is this going to is this going to eliminate my job or is this actually going to make yeah. me faster and uh, you know it's, it's going to make me better at my job and, and ultimately right. getting promoted right i think we also i feel like we also see you know the atlantic divide uh, unsurprisingly when you know when we talk about tech topics in general yeah and uh, with the us being you know, one or two heads two years ahead in terms of general adoption of you know AI. Then obviously also depends on industries. I mean, there's industries like uh, you know pharmaceutical insurance industries that uh, have been working with uh, you know more classic AI for a very long for a very long time, mm-hmm. um, and are maybe you know more more disposed towards uh, using adopting Gen AI than. Uh, uh, other industries that are, you know, more maybe more nuts and bolts, as you would say. So there's there's these different there's these different elements uh, playing into it. Um, there's a there's a broad spectrum, but uh, I think we're seeing more and more companies who have really and, and stakeholders in these companies who really have a very clear idea. Hey, this is where I can really get value out of. These are the use cases. I know they're gonna, you know, get me so much more efficient. They're gonna make me more money. They're gonna allow me to solve problems also because I can't recruit the, the necessary talent, uh, mm-hmm. for example. And and they are and they are pushing and they're pushing very strongly. So there's there's a broad kind of spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, you know, in uh, in Moore's ter- Jeffrey Moore's terms, I think we're we're crossing the chasm, yeah? and we have some companies on one side of the chasm, and we have other companies on the other side of the chasm. Yeah, absolutely. I can see that. And what do you see as as far as Gen AI? How is it benefiting field service teams? So, if you if you think about field service and and service in general, I think it's a that's really where we have a a huge opportunity for for Gen AI to make things better and more efficient. And you know, it really starts to going back to you know getting new employees up to speed yeah uh, right. i think there that's that's one where it can help uh, give, helping them get a helping technicians and also service staff get a better overview and understanding of the situation yeah you know what's happened there in the past what kind of similar cases uh, did i have uh what's uh, you know where's this client coming from is he calling for the first time etc did the did he have the same similar problems with uh, with uh, you know other devices or other equipment that he's using in the past and uh, so having that uh, having that productivity boost at the beginning but then going all the way to really going into the nuts and bolts of solving the problem yeah, by by looking at you know what have we done in practice in similar cases what have other service technicians done what kind of spare parts did they have to use uh, what was what did the trick ultimately, and uh, making that accessible to the uh, customer service employee, to the technician, and ultimately allowing them to you know fix the problem faster, make the make the client happier faster, and uh, and ultimately also reducing cost and, and increasing the overall productivity of the team. Okay, yeah, I think that's really imperative, especially like. Gen AI or AI in general has been the topic for the past year. So I think understanding where this plays a role or how it helps teams is so imperative with all of the different resources out there. So as a technician, a call center rep or a dispatcher, how does your solution Insight Loop help me? Can you show us or give us an example or um, let us see what that looks like? We can we can definitely we can definitely show that. I can uh, okay. I can share my screen. Hopefully, I get this right. <laughs> there we go. So you should now see my screen. Is that uh, correct? Yes. Perfect. So what you see here is the you know that's the kind of landing page. Of uh, inside loop or solution or general solution for service and uh, field service. Uh, when you start it standalone, now uh, that's a very important point that we're touching here. Uh, most of our clients don't use it standalone. Now, normally you will see inside loop embedded into you know uh, into a Salesforce, into a Service Max, into an SAP FSM, and uh, really fetching on the context that uh, the technician or the the service uh, the service agent is already in so you're typically inside a service case and that's where you get all the information that uh, that we're bringing up here 
In this case, I'll, I'll show it standalone because we don't want to, you know, advertise any any uh, FSM solution in particular here during this uh, during this call. And what you see here is, uh, you know, kind of the overview from, you know, where you can where you can start asking questions about specific, uh, you know, customers, clients, or specific equipments. But you can also jump directly into the service cases that you have been assigned as a technician. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm a technician in this case. And uh, this is the overview of the different service cases that I have. Um, there's the, I can see the customer, I can see the equipment. This is typically coming from, you know, the, the service tool, the service, um, the, the, the ticket management system okay. uh, with the issues that have been reported. So this is typically what happens, you know, when somebody calls in, you know, what's, uh, what's, the, what's the problem? What do they see? What are the symptoms? And uh, based on that, uh, you know, uh, what Inside Loop does, it, it will look through all the documents and past service cases uh, available and also the history of this particular equipment and give you the insights about what uh, the, the actual problem here might be. And so I'm going to click on this now. And so I'm navigating inside this, uh, this uh, service case. So here, the, the equipment we're talking about is a, is a wind turbine, wind turbine 80167DD. And uh, what was reported is a pitch bearing failure. What you see now is that, uh, you know, based on past service jobs, will tell you, hey, what might be the cause for that issue? Uh, you know, in this case, PCS malfunction, it will also link you to, you know, similar service cases in the service ticketing system okay. that, uh, you know, exhibited exactly the same root cause as, as the one, uh, you know, described here. Um, we have Another example here, or another possible root cause: rolling element fatigue, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, you know, we'll also give you the details about uh, these things. We'll give you also the sources. So here, this is coming from this is coming from the different service cases that we've had in the past, the, the service jobs themselves. But uh, we also uh, see here, uh, you know, what what do the manuals, what does the knowledge base tell us about the pitch bearing failure on this type of wind turbine. And then I could even click on it. Uh, you probably don't see this because it's opening a new window for me. Uh, but it then opens this document from the document management system, which can be a SharePoint, which can be a you know, Documentum, all these different types of document management systems or knowledge bases or wikis even, uh, where the information that is uh, you know described here is coming from. Uh, also gives us information about the critical parts. So for each of the root causes, you know, what are the parts that I will need to fix that particular root cause. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's also all kinds of information that comes around that yeah, from, uh, you know, similar service jobs, from, uh, you know, similar turbines that, uh, you know, had, had similar issues in the past or similar that have had similar service cases come up that I can then, uh, you know, also click into and, you know, bring that up see this context information. I can see uh, images from the field. So what this means is, uh, you know, other other pictures, essentially, pictures of, uh, you know, this typical, this this failure here from the other service cases in case, you know, somebody recorded pictures of it. Mm -hmm. That helps me visually also confirm, hey, okay, this actually looks similar to what we had in a, to what we had in a different case. Okay. Uh, one thing here that's also cool is that, I mean, you see you see all these things here show up as kind of, we call them widgets. So there's one widget here. There's, uh, you know, this uh, these widgets here with the images from the field and similar service jobs. Uh, it's also extensible. So the way you have to think about it is like, to go back, you know, Gen AI, what, what's Gen AI? So what, what it does here is uh, all these things are extracting data that is very related to, uh, you know, the pitch bearing failure on this typical, on this uh, type of wind turbine. And then it's, uh, you know, extracting information, asking questions on this data. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we can do here is uh, we can expand that. So we can, you know, you have a specific question you want to know, you know, sometimes we have, uh, we have clients, they say, hey, when I, when I look at a specific uh, at a specific type of equipment, a specific wind turbine or engine or whatever it is, I also need to have information, you know, about how it was commissioned uh, mm -hmm. uh, or how it's operating. And they have this information in various documents for this specific instance of, a, you know, of an engine or for, of, a, of, a, of a wind turbine or whatever it is. 
And uh, then we can make a specific request, a specific prompt, we call it, that will show up in every service case for this specific client, you know, extracting this specific information from, from the equipment. Now. So it's, uh, okay. it's kind of modular, you can expand it, you can add your own kind of specific queries and that, that makes it super powerful. Is there a feedback loop? Is there something where? There is a feedback loop. <laughs> How did you know? We have, uh, we have. So you can you can say at the end, uh, you know, you get this answer here, uh, or you get the, all this information, and uh, we ask, you know, is this is this answer helpful? And you mm -hmm. can say yes. You can say no. If you can, if you say no, you also get, uh, you know, you actually say. You know, the wrong root cause, the documents that show up here were not relevant, wrong parts, etc. So you can really give detailed feedback on what the machine tells. And why are we doing that? For two reasons. And one, we want to, of course, uh, you know, know uh, how helpful it is. But also, uh, this allows us to, um, you know, have a, have a feedback on, you know, where is information missing? You know, what's mm -hmm. the, what's the, where are knowledge gaps in the system? You know, where do we don't have any sources? Where do we not have, uh, you know, uh, service, similar service cases that we can draw upon so that we can then feed that back to the to the service organization, and especially, you know, very often you have uh, knowledge management teams who look into, you know, what's what's missing, what's what what do we need to provide in terms of information to help the technicians and the service staff. Right. It also allows us to wait you know, sometimes you have jobs, service jobs. Everybody knows this. Yeah, you go through your service uh, things, your service kind of uh, past jobs, and mm -hmm. there's like a couple of jobs that you haven't documented so well. Uh, I'm sure everybody has seen this. Um, and uh, then these jobs, ultimately, you want to exclude them uh, from here. So then when you say no, the wrong root cause, we also know that uh, the jobs that you see here they may be not the best uh, jobs to to you know bring back in terms of knowledge source now, and then that also helps improve the system on a continuous basis. Okay, interesting. So I see this being very beneficial in improving a lot of things in the field service process, like you know first time fix rate, um, knowledge retention, knowledge gap, um, retrieval of information super quick. As a service leader, or if I was a service leader, knowing the market right now and how people are being very cautious with where they're putting their money, what ROI percentage can companies expect from using a tool like Insight Loop? Yeah, so that's a very good question. And very often, uh, you know, we actually work together with the clients and kind of figure out you know, what's the, what's the ROI, what's the, what's the expected ROI, and what's the ROI you actually get out of it. Um, mm -hmm. the, the typical numbers we see is somewhere around the 8 to 1 to 10 to 1 uh, benefit to cost ratio. Yeah? So you're getting, you know, for, uh, you know, say if the tool costs you $1, you will get $10 of savings out of it. Yeah, that's the, that's the typical ratios that we see. So it's, it's a huge ROI. Uh, because it helps save so much time and because it helps, right. you know, get to the root cause and get to the fix uh, so much faster than if you, you know, if you're there on your own or if you, especially if you have, uh, you know, newer service employees who haven't, uh, who don't have that uh, full baggage of, uh, you know, 40 years of experience of fixing specific right. things, right? Yes. So with things like this, what would you say is, what resistance are you seeing with using Gen AI? Are you seeing any resistance or what, what are you hearing? Um, so I think it's with, like with every technology adoption, uh, I mean, I'm, I've been around the industry for, for, for some time and uh, mm -hmm. I think with every new technology that comes out and not only every new technology that comes out, but also with every software that a company introduces as a new software, there's a certain phase of resistance. Yeah. Where at the beginning you have some champions, of some people who just go, "Oh wow, this is really cool!" Yeah, yeah. those are your your champions, and they you know they kind of embrace it. Uh, you also, and these are super important. You also have uh, the guys; they will uh, you know they will find the one thing that doesn't work, and uh, and put it right up in your face. Yeah, so that uh, that obviously also happens. Uh, these are more the, the the kind of people who who kind of. Uh, slow down the slow down the change process but overall what we see is uh 
you know there's there's uh, the excitement comes comes really quickly and it's uh, it's super rewarding yeah. very often you know when we do these pilots and then uh, you know our clients show the pilots uh, at the kind of internal global service meetings yeah. and uh, or at trade shows even and uh, then they have people from the other departments coming in and like why, why do i not have access to this like <laughs> yeah this game ch- and that's really cool that's when you you know that's when you see that you're really making a difference yes i i know i hear a lot about people saying you know well we don't have good data or we have bad data how easy is it to to get started with like a solution like insight loop like what what can you do to make the process easier what do you have yeah so obviously the better the data the better the predictions, the better the right. better the results you're gonna get. Yeah, so that's uh, that's for sure true. Um, what we're seeing in practice is that a lot of companies think that their data is much worse than it actually is. Yeah, uh, because you don't have this well documented service cases, and uh, so you're saying, okay, I can't start because you know what would it learn from my service cases haven't been well documented or I'm not, you know, I'm not recording the spare parts I'm using or I'm recording the spare parts in a completely different system and therefore I don't know which spare parts were used for which service case. And then how can the AI learn which spare parts I actually need? And uh, so what we see in practice is that two things. One, there are obvious other sources of, of information like, you know, documents, user manuals, repair manuals, commissioning documents, like a lot of documentation that's usually very well kept and, and in good shape that can be leveraged from day one as uh, you know the the quality of the service cases improves yeah, in terms of data and then that that grows uh, so that's the obvious one but very often we also see that there are you know very good uh, kind of not so obvious sources of information yeah? like uh, you know with one client who who uh, they, they had collected uh, an email uh, repository from past service cases that they that they found from a company that they acquired and uh we used that and there was uh you know the information and there was uh, was gold huh? so wow that, uh, <laughs> that's interesting really yeah. good information on how to fix uh you know some very specific uh, uh some very specific products that they had and there's uh there's a lot of things like that uh, that you can tap into that you can bring in we see a lot of technicians use they have their own cheat sheets yeah? oh okay <laughs> yeah a lot of technicians they have their you know Word documents, Excel files. Uh, yes. Where they, you know, like where they where they look at, you know, if you see this error, this is what you did, and this is what you should do. Yeah. In all kinds of different formats, and uh, nobody knows about it. Sometimes they share it uh, between them, but sometimes they just keep it from themselves. And uh, you know, bringing that in, that's uh, sometimes they can be, you know, gold and in these sources. Uh, you know, also Teams chats or even you know WhatsApp groups that the technicians have, uh, you know, or WeChat in in. The, in uh, mm-hmm. China, etc., yeah. uh, th- there can be a lot of good information that you can use uh, and uh, bring into Inside Loop, and then make it really available to everybody. Is there a test or an assessment that you Inside Loop provides to check this data to make sure they're ready for Gen AI? Yeah. So what we, you know, what we very often what we do is uh, we start with a kind of a data assessment. Uh, kind of AI readiness assessment, uh, we call it, uh, which allows really to dive into, you know, is it uh, is the data in good shape? Um, is there enough data to really get started, to get value out of it uh, before we do, uh, you know, a typical pilot and then roll out? The pilot being the phase where you can really, you know, test it, kind of really get a feel for it. How does it actually, how does what I just showed you work with your own data? Uh, and... Uh, does it answer the questions in the right way before you then roll it out to the entire organization? Yeah. Okay. And from what I understand, everyone that's listening on here and or that will watch this, Core Systems is going to be offering a 50% off for the AI readiness assessment. So the first three signups are going to get 50% off of this AI readiness assessment. We'll check your data. Everything that JT just went over um, will assess and see if you're ready for Gen AI. So JT, what's on the roadmap for Insight Loop? What other features or things, exciting things that you want to mention that are on the roadmap? 
Great question. You know, when people ask me, you know, what's on the roadmap, I always say what you just saw is the worst you'll ever see it, uh, because uh, we have a lot of a uh, lot of new things in the in the making. Um, you know, what what you just saw is, uh, you know, is is very visual. You get pictures, you get text um, based on your service cases. Uh, what what we didn't experience right now was the whole voice part now, right. and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to reveal all the details of the new features, but we have a lot of <laughs> voice direction. So one thing we already do is obviously taking not only, uh, you know, the service uh, the service cases as they are written down, but also the trans also taking the calls as audio and transcribing mm -hmm. them, and you know, using that information to inform what Inside Loop will give you. But I see this moving much further in terms of support of the technician. That you know, while you're driving to the site, you get already your uh, you know. You, you get your uh, your heads up, your kind of uh, you know what's the what's the case going to be about? What what should you know? What should you look at? Uh, up to supporting you know the technician via audio while he's uh, while he's repairing and uh, and analyzing stuff, rather than forcing him to have you know one eye, one hand on the mobile and one one hand in the engine yeah. uh, type of situation. So that uh, that is a that is a biggie. Uh, as well as then uh, using all this information that we get throughout the interaction, I mean, the, inside, the interaction between the technician and, and inside loop uh, to then write the service report. Yeah. So uh, today we can, we can do that based on the written information that we have, but, uh, you know, doing that, doing that loop via voice at the end, that's mm -hmm. uh, something that's uh, coming, coming up very soon. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure technicians would love that. <laughs> Just voice it and saves them time. Well, JT, this was very informative. I think that a lot of um, technicians, service leaders, et cetera, this is going to save them time, improve a lot of things in their processes. Is there anything that you want to leave everybody with? Any tips, anything else that you want to share? Yeah, I think my, my biggest... Uh... My biggest advice, my biggest recommendation is, uh, you know, uh, embrace it and try it out. Uh, I think that's mm -hmm. uh, that's the that's the best advice uh, that uh, that you can give. Uh, it doesn't make sense to write, uh, uh, you know, tons of strategy paper about how uh, AI could change a company and, and do executive yeah. <laughs> presentations, et cetera, et cetera. Although I've done that in my past a lot, so I shouldn't say that. But uh, frankly, try it out. Give give people access to you know Anthropic uh, GPT, etc., uh, and uh, and test it, pilot stuff, uh, experience it uh, to to help you get uh, get on the AI journey. Yes. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us, especially JT. Thank you so much for going into how Gen AI is impacting field service. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your day or night. Thanks, Kat. Love the show.